Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear respected guests and uh, students, professional students, I'll first like to thank you for having me here. It's an honor. And um, I'm not a famous speaker, just a brother in Islam. And I'd like to thank the uh, Kerala Nadatul Mujahideen Association and the respected elders and brothers for inviting me for this. It's an honor to be here and to uh, be with you. And I would like to thank the uh, Mujahid student movement for this opportunity to speak and to see this uh, blessed gathering by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, it just brings joy to my heart to see brothers and sisters uh, coming for the sake of Allah together uh, to learn and to be in a brotherhood environment um, in the, you know, the enjoying the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Jazakumullah khair. Inshallah, the uh, speech, the topic today, it is a very uh, deep topic. And I would like to give, uh, give me not only your attention, but also your hearts. I'd like you to open your hearts to this uh, topic because it's a very deep topic. And I hope that I can reach every single one of you with this. طيب. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يحده الله فهو المحتد وما يدلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أشهد ولا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وحق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد I would like to start with a hadith a hadith that is found it's found in both Bukhari and Muslim it's متفق عليه hadith and it is one of the hadith that really brings so much peace to my heart and the Prophet said, Al-Mar'u ma'amanahab. The man is with whom he loves. The man is with whom he loves. The man is with whom he loves. This hadith reported by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. Who do you love? If I am to ask you, if I were to take a minute right now and think, who do you love? As the Prophet said, the man is with whom he loves. It applies to all of us. We will be with those whom we love in the akhirah. Who do we love? Who do we wake up in the morning for? What kind of TV shows do we watch? What kind of pictures do we hold sacred as when we look at them, we say, I want to be like this. Many people today hang posters of movie stars and television, famous people on television, singers and so on. But who do we love? Who do we want to love? Who do we want to be like? Every person is faced with a choice in life. Every single one of us here is faced with a choice in life. Who are we going to follow? Who are we going to imitate? Who do we love? Some say it's their faith. You can ask a Christian. He will say he loves his faith. You can ask a Hindu, a Buddhist. A Muslim, many will say they will love their faith. Others will say, I like money. I love money. I love music. I love movies. I love so and so and so. They say, who are you to judge me? To what do I like? 
what is right for you might not be right for me. Truth is relative, they say. What's true to me doesn't necessarily mean that has to be true to you. Right? This is a common argument of today's modern preachers for certain secular humanistic understanding. There is no such thing as ultimate truth. How can I even stand today in front of you and preach to you and say to Islam the ultimate truth, they say, when there is no such thing as ultimate truth? Now this is a very deep point because such a point has allowed for people to deviate from the path that was chosen for them by their creator for the whole sole purpose that they were created from and for they deviated from that what is the ultimate truth what's truth for me might not be truth for you now we boast that we live in a society in a time where reason is something so important we have reached an intellectual pinnacle we have reached a high in intellect. We have science to help us. We have the scientific process to help us. Okay. So let's ask such people a very simple question. Is it ethical for someone to go and kill someone? Is it ethical for someone to go and drink and drive any nation any religion no matter what you pledge allegiance for no person with any reasoning or rationale will ever say hey you know what your truth is your truth and my truth is my truth what's truth for you might not be truth for me you know that's just an evasion of topic actually brothers and sisters there's no such thing as your truth is my truth and my truth is yours, or vice versa, or what's truth for me might not be truth for you. The truth is, and the only reasonable option is, that there's only one truth. There's only ultimate truths. You cannot say that the day is night and that the night is day, even though some people will go to that extent. They'll say, if my sheikh or my church says it's night outside and it's day, I will agree with him because he said it. There is ultimate truth. No one in this whole world, no matter how much they dislike, for example, Muslims, would they ever condone and say, hey, you know what? What happened in Bosnia, for example, we agree with it. No one, no one. That is an ultimate truth. It was a crime. No one, no one in the right mind would condone people going and blowing themselves up and killing innocent people and calling for it. No one. No one. So there is ultimate truth. There is truth, there's good, and then there's wrong and evil. Two different things. But what is truth? How can we find what is truth? Many of us are born into faith. Some of us born Muslims. We follow what our parents